All right, so today we are here to talk about finally, because so when I'm recording this, I will say I have not beaten it, but I am extremely close. And by the time this video does go live, I will definitely have beaten the game. So just putting that little disclaimer and also the disclaimer of I watched, I think, John Wolf here on YouTube play through the original Silent Hill 2. So like, I already know the story and all of that. I never actually played Silent Hill 2, the original myself. I'm gonna be fully transparent with that. But anyway, let's just jump right into talking about Silent Hill 2 Remake 2024. It's technically just called Silent Hill 2, but you know, you gotta differentiate them somehow. So anyway, let's get on to the story. So, I also want to preface this video by saying I, as always, will of course let you know when I get to the spoiler areas. And I'm treating this, because there are a lot of people who are coming in new to the game, as though, you know, people don't know the story. Because there are plenty of people who don't. So, any spoilers, like you post in the comments or anything, just make a note of it. Okay? Appreciate it. But anyway, so the basic story is you are playing as James Sunderland, who receives a letter from his dead wife, Mary, who died three years ago, saying she is in Silent Hill waiting for him, where they used to vacation together and visit a lot. So he goes there because, I mean, Mary's supposed to be gone. She was supposed to be gone for three years now. So he's confused and wants to see if he can actually find Mary and find what's going on. That's all I can give away, really, without starting to get into too much detail or even spoiler territory. So anyway, let's just move on to the gameplay. So gameplay wise, it's of course a pretty basic game given that, you know, it is just a horror game that's mostly focused on puzzles. The combat, it's not the main focus, so it definitely is, I would say, maybe a little janky and not the smoothest feeling, but it it doesn't make it so like it's not playable and like I said, combat in this game is not the main focus. And in some ways, the combat being Eh, kind of not the greatest. Could You could make an argument that it makes sense with James's character, given that he is just a normal dude. He's not a fighter. Like, he doesn't- he's never been on the police force or anything like that. It makes sense James isn't exactly gonna be a great fighter. I mean, it, he's just picking up a board in the beginning to do melee attacks. But along with the gameplay, I mean, everything runs smoothly. I, the only time I had any kind of frame rate drop is, and I'm not gonna give spoilers, so it was just after the fight in the freezer, if you know, you know. Uh, I noticed that there was a little bit of lag, nothing though that like broke the game or anything. I played on the PS5, uh, I know a lot of people on the PC were saying they were having some issues in areas with like frame rate drops or like a white line um, that was outlining characters sometimes and everything. So I, I do know that's a thing, I guess, on the PC. Pretty sure Bloober Team is working on fixing that, but otherwise it runs smoothly. Honestly, the environment of the game and everything, all the graphics, like, that's, it's a 10 out of 10. It, it looks really good and the atmosphere is it's it's on point but i'll go more into detail on all of that moving on to my thoughts and opinions okay so i have a lot of thoughts and opinions i was in the camp when i first saw the reveal trailer and how james looked which to be fair, probably shouldn't have judged on that because that was just a first showing and it didn't look super great. I wasn't really sold on it. I didn't, I wasn't even going to pre-order it or anything. But the 15 minute 
gameplay trailer that they released, I believe that was in Brookhaven Hospital. I want to say that's the location, if I'm remembering correctly. It was in Brookhaven. That sold me on it. I was like, okay, you know what? Screw it. Put down a pre-order. This actually looks really good. I am going to put down a pre-order for this and actually play it. Because originally, I wasn't very convinced by how James looked, which, again, I probably shouldn't have judged it that quick because I, uh, people want to say they, well, we, you know, complained and they changed it, but... It's very possible Bloober Team was always going to change it anyway, and that was just kind of how it was looking at the time. Like, I feel like people online sometimes take too much credit. Like, slight tangent, but that whole Sonic fiasco, we all know they weren't actually going to do that. The internet needs to calm down thinking that they actually made a change on that. I guarantee it was just a marketing ploy. Sonic was never going to look like what they originally showed. Like, there's no way. But anyway off that rant. So I pre-ordered Silent Hill 2 and honestly I freaking love this game. Like the atmosphere and everything of what they did. Like I mean of course the game looks absolutely amazing. I played on the PS5. Um, so like I had said before the only time I ever noticed a frame rate drop was right now without giving spoilers after the freezer boss fight. I think that's the best way to say it without giving spoilers. That's the only place really where I had any like frame rate drop. Like I said, I'm playing on the PS5. I'm not a PC gamer. Like any games I play, I always play on a console. Hate me all you want, get in a debate in the comments. I don't care, all right? My husband's PC master race, if that makes you feel any better. But that's the only time like I had any issues, but the game, it honestly looks so good. Oh, I also did have one body one time where I left the hallway or the room where it was in and I came back and it did that it was standing and then just flop ragdoll down. It actually kind of worked as a jump scare because for a second I was like, oh shit, did another monster appear? But it wasn't. So it actually kind of worked out in like the atmosphere and everything, even though, you know, it kind of wasn't supposed to happen. But that's the only time at least that I ever saw it happen. Maybe it happened more, but... The game is pretty dark, admittedly, so it can be a little hard to see, but that's the only time I saw anything really weird happen with the bodies, at least in my playthrough. I'm not saying other people didn't see stuff, but for me in my playthrough, that was the only thing I saw. But back to it anyway. This game, it, like I said, it looks so good, and the atmosphere and everything, it... Because Senor Sylveon, he isn't always... Uh, here when I'm streaming and everything, you know, sometimes he's in another room doing his own thing or whatever. But at the times where I was streaming by myself, just the oppressive, lonely atmosphere, they nailed it so well. I felt so alone and it was like difficult to play in a good way because I could only handle so much because the atmosphere was just so spot on for what it should be that when, you know, I met up with Maria finally, I was so freaking relieved to have someone with me. It was like a huge weight lifted on my shoulders to like have someone with me and not be alone in this super depressing atmospheric place. So, you know, I mean, for the fact it's Silent Hill in a horror game, amazing on that. So... I'm going to kind of freely talk now. There's what I will say, if you don't want to hear the spoilers, is I 100% recommend this game. Pick it up. Check it out. Like, yeah. So now we're going to get into the spoiler kind of aspect where I'm going to talk more freely. So I, like, I enjoyed all of the game with like the puzzles and everything. There were some puzzles I kind of struggled on. There was only one fight I struggled with and this was something I kind of noticed online too. And it wasn't even a difficult fight, but the fight with Eddie, it was just very difficult. Not because Eddie himself was difficult. It was just so freaking hard to see. And let me tell you, that guy moves fast. For him apparently being a fat loser, he moves fast. Like, 
It was extremely dark. Like, I even had to get Senor Sylveon to help me, and even he was having a little bit of difficulty just because it was so hard to see. A lot of people said they actually went and, like, turned the contrast up so that way he couldn't just be hiding because otherwise, like I said, the Eddie fight, it's not difficult because of actual difficulty. It's only difficult because you can't see him. And he, like, you can't see him until he's, like, right on top of you. And you're supposed to kind of, like, use sound and watch for the light of the revolver. But even then, he moves so fast. Half the time, by the time you get to where he was, he's gone already. Or he's already poised and ready and he just hits you with the rifle, which does a shit ton of damage. But honestly, like, speaking with Eddie, though, I do really like his character and how they did it. I think Bloober Team did a fantastic job of, like, basically making a love letter to Silent Hill 2. Like, you can tell they were fans of the game. They took the original game and they wanted to just, you know, update the graphics, just add kind of stuff that they felt would enhance the game. You can tell it's a remake that was done not as a cash grab. It was done as a, we are really fans of this game and we want to bring it to like the next generation so that that way more people can play it for themselves and everything. And honestly, because I know there was some like people didn't like character changes, but I still, still think Maria, she is definitely like the outfit is different, but let's be real. It's not any less like sexy. She definitely still gives off the, you know, I'm very flirtatious and trying to be sexual. And as for Angela, I saw a lot of people not like that they made her look young. Because I guess, and I didn't know this either, but she is actually supposed to be, I think, only like 19 or 20 in the game. She's supposed to be very young. But in the original, she looks and kind of sounds a lot older, the voice actress. And I guess they did do that because the whole idea of, like, trauma can age you, which... I mean, it's it's not wrong. I'm not saying that's a bad idea, but it did make it a little confusing in that sense, I guess. Because I saw a lot of people not even, and me included, like I said, not realizing Angela's supposed to be only like 19 or 20. Like, I thought she was in her mid-30s in the original game. Because that's how she looked. And so that's why with that changing that... I don't see it as bad. Like, I still think her character model looks great. Her voice actress did a fantastic job. All of them, they look good. They sound good. Like, they kept all of the aspects of what made these people them. And just, like, improved upon it. Or at least just kept it faithful to the original. Honestly, too, if you are someone who is a new player and kind of puzzle games do intimidate, if, like, I, I'll admit, I'm playing on light difficulty, but I feel like even for the most part, probably for most puzzles on, you know, normal or hard, the way the game is, it feels like there's so much you have to explore. It's like, how am I supposed to know what I do? I'm not getting any direction. But, the game makes it very clear like the original did because James will constantly be marking on the map like if he can't get through a door or if there's a key item here, if it's a door that's like blocked or something you can unlock. Um, if someone mentions something in a note, he'll be like, oh, question mark in this area. And just, I mean, the way you end up wandering around and just finding stuff, like it lets you figure it out without holding your hand per se. Like, obviously, there's some, you know, they give you kind of general direction, but they don't, it looks overwhelming, but it's not really as overwhelming as you think it would when you're actually exploring the map and everything and trying to find stuff. So if you are someone who is maybe a little nervous about that or a little off put, don't, don't let it scare you. It's really not that bad. They did, you know, they kept up with the fantastic job of that. But honestly, I love this game. And... I, I genuinely think people should check it out, whether you played the original and loved it, or you haven't played it and you just want to. Like, I do think everybody can get enjoyments out of this game. Like, I highly recommend it. 
And I saw that Bloober Team is interested in remaking or making new Silent Hills. And honestly, at this point, if they do say they're coming out with another remake, I will pre-order it because they did such a fantastic job with Silent Hill 2. I have a lot of confidence in them. They do actually have another new game uh, that they're working on. And I'm curious to check that out because I feel like they maybe have found, because their old games are maybe a little more divisive. I feel like they've found what they want to do. So I'd even be kind of curious to check that out. But anyway, go ahead, leave down in the comments below. Let me know if you played the original or if you've just played the remake, if you liked it, what your favorite Silent Hill is. If you want to see more videos like this, go ahead and hit that, that, hit that subscribe button. I upload every Friday. Uh, my Twitch, second channel, Instagram, Twitter, Discord that I don't really use, admittedly, all linked down below. Twitch. I stream Monday through Thursday, 8.30 p.m. Central Time. But yeah, I hope you all enjoyed and I will see you in the next one. Bye.